Can you do what? Did you lose connection or did you just leave and come back? I was switching computers. Oh, I gotcha. All right. Um, okay, so I think we were on number six. So let me get that rolling. Um, remember what our, oh, I gotta share your screen first. Thank you. All right, you guys see kids? Somebody say you see differential equations so I know we're on the same yep. page. Okay, great. It. All right, so here's the plan. You pretend like the um, G of X is not there and you solve the homogenous, the equals zero one by factoring and deciding if the zeros are real or complex or repeated and you set up what's called your complementary solution from there. Then you make a guess at the form of your particular solution based on what kind of function your g of x is. And then you solve for the y prime and the y double prime, y triple prime if you needed it, to plug it back into the original and you set it equal to that g of x and solve a system. Once you solve your system and find your particular solution, you get your general solution by combining your complementary solution with your particular solution and you're done. Um, so I think that we were on number six. And number six is um, just to determine the form of the particular solution. I think on your homework, some of the questions are just the form of your particular solution. It's gonna be really irritating if you go through and find the particular solution when you were just asked to find the form, so make sure you read the directions carefully. Now what the particular solution should be is based off of these three fellas put together. The particular solution should be starting with a quadratic, ax squared, plus bx plus c for that first piece. And then for the second piece, it's got a sign. And to take care of a sign, if you take a look in your chart, you have to have a piece of sines and cosines. So it would be an a sine of 2x plus b cosine of 2x. But I already have an a and a b. So I probably better move on to an E and an F for that. And then for the third piece down there, gonna have another piece. This one is a polynomial times an E to the X. And the particular solution for polynomial times an E to the X is the polynomial times that e to the x. This is a linear polynomial. It's not just a g x plus h, or it's not just a g x, it's a g x plus h. You gotta get all the way down to the constant and then an e to the six x. So the particular solution should be a combination of all three of those put together. That is assuming that none of those have repeats in them from the complementary solution, which you have to find from here. Finding the complementary solution is really the easy part, um, but people wanna skip over it when it's finding the particular solution because you don't have to do it unless you have a repeat. Um, and if you are solving this system for A, B, C, E, F, G, and H, which would be horrendous to solve, unless it was one of those ones that just kind of fell into your lap, you were solving it, you would create a system that's not solvable if you had um, a repeat. So we definitely need to do the, or if I can delete pages. Oh. I do that.
I tried to do this before you guys got on and I couldn't find out how, but since I've come across it now, I'm going to delete all these old ones so we don't have to keep going back and forth. I don't think I want to delete that one. All right, so we have um, m squared minus 9m plus 14. Which factors into m minus 7 and m minus 2? So the form of the complementary solution is c1 e to the 7x plus c2 e to the 2x, which is not repeated in any of our particular solutions that we had. We did have an e to the 6x, but that's the only thing that we had with an e in it. So no repeats. And so the particular solution is in fact um, this rainbow over here, ax squared plus bx plus c plus e sine of 2x plus f cosine of 2x plus gx plus h e to the 6x. Um, number seven, find a particular solution. So again, you've got to find the complementary. Don't forget at the beginning to always check for the complementary, even if it's just to find the particular. So, Oh, I get no bacon? No, twins did it. Oh, so. They made the eggs by themselves? Well, I helped them, but they're okay. learning, so I don't okay. know okay. Hey, guys, I'm having eggs. Sorry in front of you. But eggs are no good when they're not hot. Agreed. M squared minus 2M plus 1 is the um, auxiliary equation, and so when you solve that, we get a double root of one. And so our complementary solution already has a repeat. It's going to be e to the x, oh, c1, I always forget those, plus c2, and it's going to be another e to the x. And since it's a repeat, you have to slide in that extra x. Complementary was not asked for, but still has to be done. The form of the particular solution should be a e to the x, x based on our g of x. And if you forget to do the complementary solution, you're going to be in a world of hurt because it's not right. Because it's a repeat. Since it's already in your complementary solution, you're going to have to crank it up by sliding in an extra x. Unfortunately, that is also a repeat. So the particular solution has to slide in an extra, extra x. And here's the form of the particular solution. So watch the directions. If the question was the form of a particular solution, we would be done. I don't believe that this one was the form of a particular solution. I think it was to find the particular solution. So that is the answer, ax squared e to the x. Well, you gotta figure out what a is before anything else. So to figure that out, that's where you plug in to the equation and do a system. Since the original equation has a second derivative, we're gonna to have to find a first and a second derivative. First derivative will be the product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Mm, I think that I'll distribute that A so I don't mess anything up just in case. I don't want to lose him. All right, second derivative. I need more space for that one. Second derivative is going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first for this piece. Then for the next term here, 
first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. And then we have to plug that into second derivative minus two times y prime plus y equals e to the x. Switching pages. Anybody need a second? Yes, just one sec. Okay. I'm going to eat a bite of eggs then. Anybody hear anything from Edwardsville over summer? No. Okay. So we're trying to find the particular solution right here? Yeah, the question was not just um, for the <clears throat> form of the particular solution, it's for the particular solution, which I have boxed in red, but I gotta have the A first. All right, so again, I'm plugging into second minus first plus y prime, and I'm gonna set that equal to e to the x. So the second was ax squared e to the x plus I must have had like terms there to um, combine <clears throat> um, 2a x e to the x and another 2a x e to the x makes a 4a x e to the x. I do wish I could scroll down on this one, but I guess beggars choosers, you know, 2a e to the x. And there's my first or my second derivative. And I have to subtract two times the first derivative. And the first derivative was um, ax squared e to the x plus 2ax e to the x. So I'm going to subtract two times that one. That's going to be a minus 2ax squared e to the x. So I think I'll put that one there. Minus 2ax squared e to the x. And then we're going to have a minus 4 if we distribute the negative 2. So it's going to be a negative 4ax e to the x. So that will go with that like term. So there's my 2y prime. And then my y simply was a... Um, a, what was my y? Y was an ax squared e to the x. There's my full second derivative minus 2y prime plus y. And thankfully, these guys cancel because there's no um, x squared e to the x term as far as my g of x goes. And also, thankfully, those guys cancel because there's none of those either. So all I have left is a 2a e to the x, and that's supposed to be equal to, I don't remember, equal to a plane e to the x, which means 2a is gonna have to be equal to one. So a is one half. So my particular solution is one half um, x squared e to the x. If it had asked for general solution and it didn't ask for general solution, but if it had asked for general solution, the general solution would be to put the two together to get um, c1 e to the x plus c2 x e to the x plus your one half x squared e to the x. It's not the question, but could have very well easily been and not any really harder, just one extra step of writing it down. If um, those, I guess, characters didn't cancel out, would your particular, would your guess of your particular solution be wrong? Exactly, or you made a mistake in the derivatives okay. when you were plugging in, definitely. And if you've made a mistake on your guess of your initial solution, um, and then they don't cancel out, 
you'll get a system that's not going to work. What do we do from there then? Change your guess or check your work. Or maybe it's um, a function that's not in the list on the first page because these, this process only works for functions that wrap themselves around like polynomials that break down eventually to a derivative of zero and um, e to the powers and sines and cosines. Anything else? There's whole different processes for. One of them is called the annihilator approach, which um, we'll do next. And then um, variation of parameters, which we'll talk about later also. And if it's not one of these wraparound fellows, then it's gonna take something else. Okay, anybody else? Is, um, I, I didn't check the list before I clicked over. Is Ben on this morning? Anybody see Ben in the list? No. I was gonna tease him about watching Disney. I heard he had a new Disney favorite movie. All right, number eight. Can't even erase it if I want to, so I guess it'll just be an ugly eight. Y double prime plus Y equals four X plus 10 sine of X. This one was to find the whole shebang and not only find the whole shebang, but also I believe there were some initial conditions. So this one's gonna be quite the mess. So we'll always start out with the auxiliary equation, and the auxiliary equation is m squared plus 1 equals 0. All right, and to solve that fella, we just gotta subtract one, square root both sides, and you get plus or minus i. So my complementary solution, which has to be paired with your particular solution for your general solution, which has to be done before you can plug in to get your c's. Complementary is c1 e to the zero x, because this is zero plus or minus i. So e to the zero x, going to be just be one, sine of one x, because the coefficient on the i is one, plus c2 cosine of beta, that's the one in front of the i, x. All right, so done for the complementary, particular solution. Particular solution based on this fella here is a polynomial of 4x, so we need a linear chunk, that's ax plus b for the first part, and then an a sine of x plus b cosine of x. So I'm not gonna use a and b again, it should be a C sine of X plus B e cosine of X. And that will be the particular piece coming out of this part. However, these are both repeats from the complementary solution. If you go with that particular solution right now and start solving, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a system that's inconsistent and can't be solved. So like what Chris was asking a minute ago, the pieces that are supposed to match up won't match up. Either something's not there that needs to be there or something is there that can't be there. So you got to watch out for that. So we're going to have to crank it up a notch. And to crank it up, when you have repeats, you just slide in an extra X. in those terms. Now we're ready for our particular. 
So since this is the full shebang, we got to work it all out. So we're going to have to find our A, B, C, and E, and then we have to go back to use our initial conditions to find our C1 and C2 from those as well. So we got a lot of work here to do. So we're plugging into a second derivative plus the Y. So we're going to need a second derivative. Can't get a second without a first. So here we go. Derivative of AX is just A. Derivative of B is just zero. Then we have a product rule. First derivative of second plus second times the derivative of the first. We have a product rule on the second fella also. First times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. And then for the second derivative, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to even fit this on one line, but I'm gonna try. Derivative of A is zero. And then here in my C, I have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, then plus the derivative of sine. So we'll have a cosine there. Then for my E, I also have a uh, product rule for the first piece. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then last but not least, the derivative of that cosine. So I'm plugging into the second derivative plus the plain y. So the second derivative is going to be negative cx sine of x. Um, I think that's times a 1. Yeah, times 1. So plus cosine of plus c cosine of x plus another c cosine of x. So might as well make that two of them. All right, did that take care of all three of those fellas? Yeah, okay, and then a minus e x cosine of x, and then there's two of the negative signs, so minus 2e sine of x. There's your second, but we have to add the original to it because the original equation was the second derivative plus y, so the plus y part is going to be an ax plus b, and I think I'll just write that at the end because it doesn't match anything I have so far. And then with it goes a cx sine of x and an ex cosine of x. And if I total all those up, I get these guys canceling. And that should be equal to my g of x. And my g of x right here at the end, let's go up on it. My g of x right here at the end should have been a 4x plus 10 sine of x. So that means 4x had to be from here. And the 10 sine of x had to be from here, which means this part has got to be nothing, and this piece has to be nothing. There's no cosine of x's, so 2c is going to have to be 0, which means my c is going to have to be 0.
uh, negative 2e is going to have to be 10, which means my e is going to have to be negative 5. My a is going to have to be 4. And there's no constant, so my b has to be 0. So my general solution can be put together with my complementary solution, which was C1. I don't want to mix it up on you guys. I can't remember which one I put first. Sine first. C1 sine of x plus C2 cosine of x plus my particular solution, which I already had right here. But now I can plug in my a, b's, and c's. Um, 4x plus 0 for ax plus b plus cx sine of x. Since c is 0, that third term is gone, plus ex cosine of x. So that's plus minus 5. So we'll just go with a subtract 5x cosine of x, and that is my particular solution. Tacked on to the end, after my complementary, complementary solution, particular solution, together give the general solution. And we would be done, except for the initial conditions allow us to solve for the C. So my first condition was if I plug in pi, I get zero. And so that's going to allow me to solve for one of my c's. So plugging in pi, I get 0. This is going to be a 0 equals. Sine of 0 is 0. So that is just going to be gone. Cosine, I'm sorry, it's sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is a negative 1. So this is going to be a minus c1. I'm plugging in pi, which makes this look a little weird, or pi. Nobody ever said your C's had to be totally beautiful. Minus two, two up. Oh, that's a C2. Is that what you said? Nick, what were you asking? Yeah, that's what I asked. Yeah. That's a C2. If you printed out the pre-done notes, I put cosine first on those. So the C1s and the C2s will be backwards compared to that. But other than that, it's the same. Okay, so this is going to be a 5 of pi. And the cosine of pi is a negative 1. So that'll switch this to a positive 5 pi. If I move the C2 to the, le C2 to the left, I get C2 is 9 pi. And then I'm ready for my next initial condition. But my next initial condition is plugged into the first derivative. So first, we got to do the first derivative. And the first derivative will be um, c1, which I don't know. Derivative of sine is cosine. c2, which I do know, so I might as well go ahead and put it in. 9 pi, derivative of cosine is negative sine. No product rule, of course, there because 9 pi is a constant. It's just a cuter constant than most. Plus the derivative of 4x is 4. And at the end, we have a product rule here on this derivative. First times the derivative of the second. Plus second times the derivative of the first. And for this initial condition, I know that if I plug in pi, I get 2. So that's going to be 2 equals cosine of pi is a negative 1. So this will be a negative c1. Sine of pi is 0, so that next term will be gone. So we have a plus 4 minus the 5, and then in parentheses, x times sine of x. Well, if x is a pi, it'd be uh, pi times negative sine of pi, but sine of pi is 0. So we get lucky, and that mess is gone. 
and cosine of pi is negative 1. And so that would be 2 equals negative, or yeah, negative C1, 4 plus 5, plus 9. So C1 equals, if I move C1 to the left and the 2 to the right, C1 equals 7. So update this final answer by replacing those C1s and C2s. And which one was in front of which? Nine pi goes in front of the cosine and the seven goes in front of the sine. Final answer. Got it on one page, but man, it was long. All right, questions on that one, anybody? Somebody at least tell me you're here. Hola, amigo. Nobody, nobody fell asleep? <laughs> Number nine, second derivative. Minus 6y prime plus 9y equals 6x squared plus 2 minus 12e to the 3x. This one is for the full general solution, but no initial conditions. So we're looking at the same steps for this one as the last one, except we don't have to solve for the C at the end. Starting with the auxiliary equation first, which factors into n minus 3 and n minus 3, giving a repeated solution of 3. We know that the complementary is c1 e to the 3x plus since it's a repeat slide in an extra x with your e to the 3x for the time yeah. number two yep nick that was not me oh who was that sounded like you who, anybody my notebook accidentally hit my space bar oh Okay. Why do we always assume it's Nick asking the question? I thought, well, I don't know. Should we keep some statistics? I mean, go back and watch the um, last few videos. I, I mean, we can't get class videos from before we had class with videos, but from the last ones. And I'm glad Nick asked the question. All right, I get it. No, I get it. I get it. No, I'm, not, I'm just going to say that I'm glad you asked because. I'm sure that other people have the questions as well, and they just don't want to ask, hey, give me that bacon. <laughs> oh, guys, look, I have bacon. Woo! Uh, hey, can you give me a glass of milk, too, since you're giving me bacon and eggs? I need something to wash it down. I love bacon. There's nothing better than fried pig. All right. Um, particular, we got a polynomial here. Just because the x term is missing, do not leave it out. You got to get all the way down every term to the bottom. And that should do it for that piece. And then we'll have a piece of e to the three x's. And that's not right because, boom, got a repeat. So that's not going to work. So what I have to do with repeats, I have to slide in the extra x. And when I do that, I still have a repeat. So I have to slide in an extra extra x. And there's the form of my particular solution. Always the next step is, I don't know, I think it's the hardest of all the steps because you got to do a double derivative to get to the y squared. And if you had a y cubed, you'd have to do three derivatives. So you got to make sure you get all your product rules and everything like that. Thank you, Mike. 
your product rules and everything like that done correctly. And if you manage to get that done correctly, then you gotta pair up everything to get your system of equations. And this system of equations has four variables, so it could be ugly, hopefully not, but it could be ugly. So I feel like the first part to getting the setup is super easy. And then the finding your A, B, C's and E's, which is all algebra, is like the hardest part. Um, 2AX plus B, that's an easy derivative. Over here we have a product rule. That's the unfortunateness of sliding in that extra X's. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And let's see, I guess I'll go ahead and leave it like this to do the second derivative. 2a and the derivative of b will be gone this time. All right, and then this piece here, I'm going to bring it 3e out front to do the product rule with what's left. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then we have another product rule here at the end. Don't forget about that E though. I'm gonna take the two E out and just do the E to the three X times X. So first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. This time we got to use them all because we're plugging into the second derivative minus six times the first derivative plus nine times y. And you can see you got a whole bunch of nastiness going on there. Tons of terms to keep track of and get messed up if you're not careful. All right, second derivative first, 2a. 3 times 3 will be a 9e, then x squared e to the 3x. And then that next term here will be a 6e, x e to the 3x. And then here, plus 2e big E, little e to the 3x. And then this last one is going to be a 6, yeah, 6ex e to the 3x. I guess I can put this one here. 6ex e to the 3x, because it's going to be in another one of those. Or you could just mark out your 6 and make it a 12. So there's your second derivative. Then I have to do minus 6 times the first derivative. So we're going to have minus 12ax. I don't have an x term at all. I'll just put it over here. Minus 12 ax, don't forget we're multiplying each piece by negative 6, minus 6b, that's a constant. And then this piece here, when I do a negative 6, is going to be a minus 18ex squared. That one I can put here, minus 18ex squared e to the 3x. Man, I hope I'm not making a mistake on these because it's going to be awful. Make sure that E gets distributed into here. So, and I'm multiplying by negative six. So that's gonna be a minus 12 EX E to the three X. Then I gotta have a nine times Y. 
So that's going to be an, a 9ax squared, which I don't have any of those yet, um, plus 9bx, that I'll call here, with the single x terms, plus the constant, so that's a plus a c. Oh, wait, I'm multiplying it by 9, aren't I? Ooh, good save, almost messed that up. And then a 9 e x squared e to the 3x. And all of that is supposed to be equal to 6x squared plus 2. Six x squared plus two and minus twelve e to the three x. Let's see, that'll go here. Messy, messy, messy. Now there's no x squared e's to the three x's, which is a good thing. Those all canceled, and they have to cancel because there's no x squared e to the 3x's in the answers. And the same with the x e to the 3x's. Those better cancel because there's none of those. Oh, man. Something happened with my negative 12a. Oh, no, not necessarily. I guess they wouldn't have to cancel, but they'd have to make to zero. And so these two are going to give us another equation for equal to zero. So we have a system to solve, and this is what it's going to look like. The one on the left is a 2a minus 6b plus 9c equals 2. And I hope it starts looking better from here, because at this point, I'm getting systems of equations with a bunch of unknowns, and I'm going to have to use matrices or something ugly, substitution, elimination, who knows. This one already looks better. 2e equals negative 12. So that knocks that one out for sure. So we know e equals negative 6. Of course, that doesn't help us for the pink fellow there because there was no e's in there anyway. And then this next guy over here is supposed to be gone. So negative 12a plus 9b is supposed to be non-existent. So that's going to have to be a zero. And then last but not least, on the far right over here, 9a has to be 6. So we have to solve that system. So starting with brown, because it's the easiest to do, a equals 2 thirds. Then I'd have to somehow combine the rest of these to get them to work. But you'll notice that if I go right back to this one, I can plug my 2 thirds in there. 2 thirds of negative 12 is negative 8 plus 9b equals 0, which tells me that b equals um, 8 ninths. And then I can plug each of them back into the original pink one to get that C. So 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds, minus 6 times 8 ninths is negative 48 ninths, plus 9C equals 2. I'm a fraction fraction clearing girl, so I would multiply both sides by 9 and get 12 minus 48 plus 81c equals 18 to solve. But you can finish that up however you want. 18 minus 12 is 6 plus 48 is 54. over 81 reduces by 9 to 6 ninths or all the way down to C equals 2 thirds and then put it all together in your grand finale answer and thank goodness we do not have to solve for um, the 
C1 and C2 on this one. <coughs> Final answer for the general solution is Y equals C1 e to the 3X plus C2 X e to the 3X. That's your complementary solution plus your particular solution, which was AX squared plus BX plus C. So that's going to be an AX squared plus BX plus C. And then we had those repeats. So the second part was going to be a E x squared e to the three x. And the e was a negative six x squared e to the three x. And here's your general solution. If you had um, some initial conditions, you could solve for your c's. But other than that, we are done. Questions on that one? Anybody? All good? Going once, twice, number 10. Triple prime. I love it when I see triple prime because then we're going to need a third derivative when we're plugging in to solve for our A, B's, and C's. It's going to be fantastic. When you're factoring, I find like that algebra people always overlook the easy kind of factoring, and that's to take out the least common multiple. Don't forget to do that. So we have zeros of zero and another root of zero for the m squared and a negative one. And so that gives me a complementary solution of c1 e to the zero x, which is just one plus C2 e to the 0x, but that's a repeat, so you have to slide in an extra x. So that's for the zero piece, the second one. And then the C3 is going to be e to the negative x. And there's your complementary solution. Now, if you notice in your list, Um, we have an e to the x with a cosine of x. <coughs> um, that'd be like this one here, an e to the x with a cosine of x. <coughs> you have to have one term for the sine piece and one term for the cosine piece, and each of them have to have that e to the same x that you have. So this one, um, our particular solution is going to need to be e to the x, one for the sine of x, and e to the x, one for the cosine of x. It seems like the textbook always puts cosine first, but I like to put sine first. I don't know why. In my old written notes, I probably have cosine first. But I think it's because it's goes sine, cosine, and tangent. You know, when you very first learn SOHCAHTOA, All right, that particular solution, notice, has nothing in common with the complementary solution. There's no repeats, so there's no need to slide any extra things in, which is good because this is already going to be a product rule. And if it's going to be a product inside a product, it was going to get really nasty. Um, so again, we're going to need the third derivative here. So starting with the first derivative. Um, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's just still going to be a e to the x sine of x. Then for the second piece, first times the derivative of the second,
plus second times the derivative of the first. Same as we had. And I was hoping that, you know, we get some canceling going on there, but notice these two fellas, I thought maybe were, yeah, they got different A's and B's, so that's not gonna work. All right, so you can do a lot of things with combining that if you wanted. Um, you could put those two together and factor out an E to the X and then make it, and a sine of X and make it A minus B, which would just be a constant. Um, I'm thinking maybe that would be a good way to go. So still doing the first derivative here, just rearranging it in a way that might make the second derivative easier. So the cosine term first, if we, um, factor out the e to the x and the cosine of x, that will leave an a plus b. I'd really like to write that out front because it's the constant. So let me scoot that over. We factor out an e to the x cosine of x. That would leave an a plus b. And if it, likewise, if you, actually you could consider it like adding like terms. You add ax a e to the x sine of x minus b e to the x sine of x, you get a minus b e to the x sine of x. So that's going to make the second derivative, I think, easier because this is a constant which can be pulled out front in order to do the product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first, and then the same one over here. I'm thinking now, maybe I wish I hadn't because some of these are gonna cancel, I'm gonna have to distribute them back out, but it's whatever. I don't know that there's always a good way to do it. First times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. Maybe you can tell which ones are going to cancel. I better not risk it. Those of you who are not neat are going to have a mess on your hands. Yeah, I got it again. Thank you. Oh. Oh, he messed me up. Where am I at? Don't ever mess up a girl in the middle of distributing. Um, let's see. I had the A and the B with the cosine, and I'm ready for the A and the B with the sign. Whew. All right, somebody's going to go. This guy. Uh, this guy. Ooh, and we have some like terms, so that'd be nice. Now, if you don't decide to uh, simplify first, you could have gone ahead and done the third derivative, but the more pieces you get, the uglier and uglier you're going to keep compounding to be. These two can go together and make 2a e to the x cosine of x. These two can go together and make negative 2b e to the x sine of x. And if you consolidate nicely, then your third derivative will be much easier. And goodness knows you've got like 500 opportunities to make mistakes. So if you can scale those back to a few fewer, then it's definitely going to be in your best interest. All right, 2a e to the x, derivative of the second, negative sine of x, plus the second times the derivative of the first will just be the same that we had. Um, First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first will be the same. 
And there's the third derivative. All right, now what are we plugging into? Third derivative plus the second derivative. Well, at least we don't have any constants to distribute in there this time, since I like to mess those up. The third derivative I already have. I don't know that I want to rewrite it, but I guess I will. Third. I should have rewritten it with the like terms right next to each other, but too late. All right, there's the third. Here comes the second. 2a e to the x cosine of x minus 2b e to the x sine of x. And all of that's supposed to be equal to um, e to the x cosine of x. So if you don't line them up, like underneath each other, we, we still shouldn't have a problem getting this done here. And we just got to put our sine terms together and our cosine terms together. Here's an e to the x with a sine. Here's an e to the x with a sine. And here's an e to the x with a sine. So negative 2a minus 4b is an e to the x with a sine. And there's none of those over here. So that has to be nothing. My cosine piece, 2a e to the x cosine of x minus 2b e to the x cosine of x plus 2a e to the x cosine of x has to be 1 e to the x cosine of x. So my second equation is 4a minus 2b equals 1. So if I was going to solve that system of equations, I would definitely use elimination and multiply this one by 2. So I could get negative 10b equals 1, or b equals negative 1 tenth. And then plug that into the other one, well, either one, pink or green. I'm going to do green just because it's closer to where I wrote it. Um, and get 4a minus 2 times a negative is going to be a plus. And 2 times 1 tenth is 1 fifth equals 1. So subtract 1 fifth to get 4 fifths. And when you divide by 4, you get a equals 1 fifth. And when you put it all together, you got everything. Final general solution is complementary solution, which was C1 for the 0, C2 e to the 0x with an extra slide in, <clears throat> plus a C3, and that last 0 was a negative 1, so e to the negative x plus your particular solution, which was a e to the x cosine of x or sine of x plus b e to the x sine of x, whichever one was which, I don't remember. Um, the one fifth goes with the sine one though, that I know. I'd have to scroll back too far to find the rest. I refuse. That's a long one, could be longer. If we had to solve for initial conditions for our C's, that definitely would be longer. All right, everybody good on that one? We got 10 minutes for the last one. It's short though. Speak now or forever hold. Speak now to tell me that you're still there. Anybody? You're good. Great. All right, next question. What is this last one? Oh, I like this one. 
form of a particular solution. The form of a particular solution means I don't have to solve. So don't get schnookered into failing to solve for the um, complementary solution though. That's a big mistake that people make. So this is a fourth derivative plus a third derivative. So that's one reason I'm glad I don't have to solve. If you don't solve for the auxiliary equation and the complementary solution first, you are not going to realize that you have repeats and you would pick the wrong particular solution. So make sure you solve the auxiliary first. Do not fail to do that. And you got repeats running rampant here. You've got a zero and a zero and a zero. Um, I don't know if you remember doing multiplicity in college algebra or pre-calc, you know, probably thinking, I don't care about multiplicity. But it's kind of important in all of these. So the complementary one is C1 e to the zero x plus C2 e to this zero x, but that's a repeat, so I have to slide in an extra x. Then plus a C3 for this, e to the zero x. That's a repeat, so if I have to slide in an extra x, but then that repeats the c2x, so I have to slide in an extra extra x. And then finally for that last one, plus a c4 e to the negative x. So the particular solution should be a constant for the constant of one, and then you have a polynomial times e to a power. If you look back at your list, um, number nine and, and number eight also are polynomials times e to a power. If you have polynomial times e to a power, you get the polynomial and you gotta take it all the way down to the constant, then times e to the power. So since it's an x squared, it would be a bx squared plus cx plus e, and then an e to the negative one power. And that's what it should be, but it's not. Because if you look at the a, that's a repeat of your c1, constant and a constant. And if you slide in an extra x, it's a repeat here. And if you decide to slide in an extra, extra x, it's a repeat here. So you have to slide in an extra, extra, extra x. So you've got to crank this all the way up to a x to the third. Now the next one's not quite so bad. You'll notice that your repeat comes from this term right here. And if you slide a single x in, that will eliminate the repeat. But you cannot just slide a single x into this term. You have to do the entire term. So it really needs to be like here. So it's not only going to crank up that, but it's going to crank up this and this as well. So you have to slide that extra into all of those places. And there is the form of your particular solution. All right, who's got questions on that one? Right. Are we done? We are done. You can turn that off. I'm going to check and see all who's here. Um, and I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do for you guys as far as tests go.